What is up, Collector Crew? Shiny Collector here. Pokemon Coliseum and Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness are a spin off series for the GameCube and the third generation of Pokemon games. The two games have differences in shiny hunting, so for this video, we're going to focus specifically on XD. But if you want to know about hunting in Coliseum, check out Oliver MKP's guide on his channel where we went over that in depth. Speaking of which, Oliver will be here to help us with this guide. Before anything else, know that shinies in XD are one out of 8,192, and there are no methods to alter shiny odds. And now, let's dive right into the colossal amount of information. These games introduce an aspect called Shadow Pokemon that have the door to their hearts closed until the player catches it from another trainer and opens that door to purify it. In Pokemon XD, Shadow Pokemon are shiny locked and non-Shadow Pokemon are not. This means we can naturally shiny hunt, gift Pokemon, in-game trades, Pokespot encounters, and Battle Simulator Pokemon. And to hunt Shadow Pokemon, we'd need to remove the Shiny Lock, which I'll get to later. Thankfully, XD has a soccer set button combination. Start, B, and X. Or, if you'd rather, you could just hit the reset button on your Wii or GameCube. Also, to our benefit, Shiny Pokemon will have a different icon. It has the Shiny colors and a different pose, although sometimes the Shiny colors and pose aren't much different from the originals. This can make resets faster since you can check the icon in the party screen, and if you have a hard time telling if it's Shiny or not, you can enter the summary screen for the Pokemon, and if it is shiny, its name will be in gold letters rather than the original white ones. Now to get into how each of these hunts works. We'll start with gift Pokemon, being the Johto Starters and Eevee. For the Johto Starters, you must go through Mount Battle Challenge, defeat the first 99 trainers, and then save before the final battle. Then for each reset, you will have to absolutely smoke his team and pick a starter. And if it's not shiny, you'll have to soft reset and beat him again until it is. You only get one of these starters per save, so make sure to choose wisely. This is a 4 minute soft reset, so it's only for the clinically insane. For Eevee, you are required to start a new game each reset. Rename your character, watch a long but pretty cool opening cutscene, exit a battle simulator, and finally check Eevee in your party. The reset is about 2 minutes long, and in the battle simulator you have a Salamence, which can be shiny with the same 1 in 8192 odds. Unfortunately, you cannot keep this one. Next, we'll move to some of the faster hunts, the in-game trades. There are two different trainers that will grant you four different trades total. Duking is in Pyrite Town and will trade you Metatite, Shuckle, and Larvitar for Trap Inch, Surskit, and Wooper respectively. Cordell is at the outskirts stand and will give you a Shadow Togepi, and once you purify it and bring it back to him, he will trade you for an Elekid. With each of these hunts, you simply save before trading, trade, and check for shininess. These are pretty fast, taking less than a minute each reset. Now let's move on to the wild Pokemon we can hunt from Pokestop. Spots. Each of these spots has three Pokemon with chances of encountering being divided to 50%, 35%, and 15%. For the Rock Poke spot, they are Sandshrew, Gligar, and Trapinch. For Oasis, they are Hopip, Fanpy, and Surskit. And for Cave, they are Zubat, Aeron, and Wooper. To hunt these, place a Poke Snack, go to a different area that is close on the map, and run around near the exit of that area, saving frequently so that you'll eventually be saved right before the monitor goes off. Then for each reset, you'd simply take a few steps to make the monitor go off, travel to the area, and check for shininess. These Pokemon will actually be shiny in the overworld, but some are hard to tell, so you may want to battle before resetting. And interestingly enough, when you first battle these wild Pokespot shinies, they do not sparkle, but after you catch them, they do. So, if you're wanting to battle to check if it's shiny for a hard to tell Pokemon, I'd recommend looking at its icon's pose to tell the difference. These resets are roughly one minute long. If you have not yet finished the Bonsley side quest, there's a 30% chance of that showing up instead of a wild Pokemon, so I would recommend recommend finishing that quest before hunting here. You can get rid of the Bonsly by just approaching it slowly once you find it at a stop. And there will always be a 10% chance of a Munchlax being here instead of a regular Pokemon spawn. In the case of either of these two Pokemon, you cannot battle them and they cannot be shiny, so you would just reset and carry on. The next type of Pokemon can be shiny, but you cannot keep them, so keep that in mind before attempting this hunt. Throughout XD there are 50 battle CDs that can be found in various ways. Each can be loaded and let you enter a simulated battle at Real Game Tower, and when you do so, the Pokemon you have in the simulations can be shiny. So if you want to quickly check these, you can enter and exit the simulator repeatedly. You can do the same thing at Pokemon HQ Lab, but with fewer options. And interestingly, these Pokemon would appear shiny in the screen before you battle, but once again, you cannot keep these shinies. And that's it for the legitimate hunts. Now I'll go over how to remove the shiny lock and hunt shadow Pokemon in XD. Before I begin, I want to give a huge shout out to Crystal. He showed me how to do this, and I would not have otherwise known how. To get started, get a copy of your game as a ROM or 
ISO file. Personally, I homebrewed my Wii and used CleanRip. Once you have the ISO file, open it in a hexadecimal editor. I use HXD. Hit Ctrl G and find the line 219510, where it says 38C00000. Change it to say 38C0FFFF. Now hit Ctrl G again to find the line 217B90 and change 7F83E3783880023 3A 0 0 0 0 0 4 B F 5 2 D A 5 2 3 8 6 0 0 0 0 0 3 8 8 0 0 0 0 2 4 B F D 4 6 7 D 4 B F 5 3 7 D D. I'll put those in the description so you can simply copy and paste. Once you've done that, save it with a name so that you know it's the completed lock removal. You can hunt it through a homebrewed Wii, homebrewed GameCube, or Dolphin emulator. Personally, I use Wii and run it through the Nintendo application. Now you can hunt Shadow Pokemon. To hunt these, it needs to be the first time you're battling against the Pokemon and not a rebattle, say before you battle the trainer. You'll need to fight and catch the Pokemon each time. It will be normal when the opposing trainer throws it out, so to check it, you need to catch the Pokemon, and after the battle, you may check it in your party. The reset length for these varies based on all of the RNG elements that go into Pokemon battles and catching Pokemon. With these unlocked Shadow Pokemon, there are four unique cases. The Shadow Lugia, Nosepass, Zangoose, and Hordel's Togepi. The Lugia can be shiny, however, since it was intended to be locked with no way of getting it shiny, Shadow Lugia does not change colors, but will sparkle if it's shiny. For Nosepass and Zangoose, you find them during a story point where you can temporarily not catch Shadow Pokemon, but you will be able to catch them later. However, the Pokemon's information, including shininess, is locked in place when you first battle them, and there is a large piece of the game to get through before you can catch them, making these unrealistic to hunt. With Togepi, there's some ambiguity on if the lock removal works for it or not. Togepi is the only Shadow Pokemon that you don't have to battle a trainer for, it's just given to you. Because of this, it's questionable if it has a different lock than the others, or the same lock that we removed. I personally attempted to test this and tried 31,000 times before the ambiguity of it made me decide to stop. So it is safe to say that it either has a different lock or I was just extremely unlucky at the worst time. That should just about cover it in terms of hunting these. To answer a few questions you may have, these can trade to Generation 3 games if you have a GameCube Game Boy Link cable, but you would need to beat the game first and for the Shadow Pokemon you'd have to purify them. Also these Pokemon can transfer up through Bank and Home, including the Shadow Pokemon. Once transferred to Gen 8, Shinies from the GameCube games would have square sparkles since they are all identified as fateful encounters. And that should fully wrap it up for XD. If you have any questions, please check the description first, and if you cannot find your answer there, then feel free to leave your question in the comments. If you want to hunt in Pokemon Coliseum, I'd highly recommend the guide on Oliver's channel. Thank you for working with me on these videos about shiny hunting in the GameCube games. And if any of you are interested in doing that in the other GameCube game, Pokemon Colosseum, feel free to check out the video on my channel. Hunting in Colosseum works very differently from XD, so if you plan on finding shinies in that game, or if you just want to learn more about Colosseum, I would highly suggest watching it. I'll link that video in the description and the end screens. Let me know if you plan to hunt any Pokemon from XD in the future, and if you do hunt them, feel free to share them with me on Twitter. Thank you all so much for watching, and until next time, keep it calm, cool, and collect. Did.